Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, you know who we are, but I'll introduce us again. That's Alex over there. I don't know which way it's pointing. That's Alex over there. This Kirby. Um, Alex, we did a video the other day and it was very intriguing to me. It was called the reason why, the number one reason why people are broke. And then, you know, you went over the topic of family and I just want to dive into it again. Uh, reason why I want to dive into it again is not because we're going to harp on the topics that you had. Family members probably already got a hit this out on you for what you said in the other one. For everybody <laughs> that didn't watch that video, you can watch that video. But I want to talk about the, the psychological damage or the psychological mindset of what family do, do that they have a generation of people that are below the income standards that they wish to achieve. Of course, you know, everybody, everybody individually always saying, oh, yeah, I want money or I want to be comfortable or I want to be rich or they always have the the get money schemes or whatever to try to, you know, elevate above. But I want to get more to the nuance of the dynamic, because the one thing that I've always heard and Alex, you probably heard it too. Correct me if I'm wrong and people in the audience, correct me if I'm wrong. I notice that most Americans, I don't care, black, white, male, female, it don't matter. Most Americans, they sit here and see immigrants that come to this country, and I'm not getting into illegal or legal immigrants, it don't matter. And then you see for, I'm not going to say for the most part, but you see a lot of immigrants come to this country and they're outperforming people that's been in this country their whole life. So, you know, dive deeper into that, just what is your thoughts? Why do you think that happens? And let's get into that one right there. Why do you think that happens? Why do you think uh, the immigrants come here and outperform the people that's been here when they both have the same or people that's been in the United States have a, a better opportunity, more of an opportunity than the immigrants to show up? I think that Americans are very sheltered to reality i think that the Amer americans that are born in america um they think that everything that is around them the world around them is how the entire world operates so they start to easily just fall into the beliefs that the system is you know sets up for kids and for for even adults for everybody where you know they they've always got someone else to blame other than themselves it, whether it's their job's fault their the government's fault the school's fault the their neighbor's fault whatever and they you know america in in a sense tries to create like a perfect like utopia inside of america compared to the rest of the world like going outside of the world or going outside of america I would say that you start to see realities of how the actual world works and Americans are very sheltered from that. And so immigrants, I think from, at least from marrying a immigrant and, you know, knowing her family, they see the opportunity in America because the truth is there is opportunity in America and in other countries, there may not be opportunity, whether that's because the country's ran by a dictatorship, the country's ran by a cartel, the country's ran by whatever. So where there's just simply not opportunities in those countries because trying to create an opportunity for yourself or take advantage because could just simply result in you losing your life. And so the opportunities that they see here in America are too good to pass up on and so their objective to get here is not necessarily for just safety or just to have food or just to whatever, but it's to create something, create a legacy, to create something better for their family. And so they see the amount of ways to make money here, especially, and how easy it is to create a business. Because other countries as well, um, to create a business, you might have to buy into you know, corruption. You might have to pay someone that is 
don't, like let's say for Colombia, right? So the trucking industry in Colombia is just it's a monopoly. It's not like I can just go get my CDL here and buy a truck and then grab a contract with FedEx or something or grab a contract with any other supplier. You know, in Colombia you have to work for decades and get kind of buddy buddy with these people that run the monopolies over there in order to get into the trucking industry and create your own line of trucks or whatever. So that's one example. But it just shows you like things are aren't things aren't ran freely in other parts of the world that they as as they are ran here. And so I think immigrants see that opportunity and they take advantage of it and they give it their all basically. Right. I mean, the one thing that you said that I, that I like was Americans are sheltered. I I love that. I love that aspect of it. And I see it because I have conversations like you. Uh, I married an immigrant. Of course, that wasn't a plan. I didn't know Alex when I got married. It was just <laughs> so I happened. We <laughs> we just happened to do it. Um, but I, I'm. I'm going to break it down a little bit deeper than that. I think it's, I think it's everything you said, I believe is correct, but I think it's more deeper than that. I mean, the one thing that you said about everybody wants to blame everybody for the reason why they don't have it. You know, you can see that in the political landscape, you know, the Democrats saying the Republicans is the reason why they don't have stuff as Americans. Uh, Republicans are blaming Democrats, telling them. So they teach people to blame everybody else for why you don't have anything. But I'm going to go, I'm going to go one step further and say America teach individualism. The family dynamic teach individualism. I mean, even from the school system that we, that we partake here in the United States, you know, it's Hey, don't look on nobody else's test. I mean, I know it's called cheating when you look on somebody else's test to get the answers. Uh, you know, you sit in your assigned seats. Uh, you have to be, you have to stand out. You have to be an individual. You can't follow the crowd. But the truth is you teach individualism, individualism, individualism from zero to 18. But in the real world, individualism does not exist. It does not exist. So just think, if you're going to buy a real estate deal, you can't do it all by yourself. You need agents, you need bankers, you need you need contractors, you need this. It's a consortium that makes it happen. I'm in corporate America, you're in corporate America. It's a lot of collaboration to get stuff done. It's not individualism. And then let's take it a step back. So we teach our kids, oh, zero, be an individual. You got to stand out individual, individual, individual. And then you send them out to the world at 18. Immigrants ain't sending their kids out to the world at 18 because the immigrants know the truth. 18 years old, they don't know a damn thing. You know, mom and dad saying, hey, we trying to live our best life. You need to go live your life so we can go live our life. I remember having a conversation uh, maybe two weeks ago. My mom's family friend, long time family friend. I've been knowing her all my life. She was here and she said, and she know that, you know, you know, we had our son and, and we've been here by ourselves. No family for the most part, the whole time we've been here. And they said, and she said, don't you need some time for you and your wife just to get away? I was like, you don't think we thought about that before we had the kid? That's why we lived our 20s, lived our best of life in our 20s without a kid before we had a kid. Everything was planned and strategic. It's not just, oh, let's go have a kid. The kids should be happy that we had them. All right, now you're 18. Go out there and fend for yourself. What the immigrants are doing, and this is the big key, what immigrants are doing, they're coming here as a collective. Their kids get to work in age, and then all of them work, but the family's not saying Get the hell out of the house. They said, hey, stay here. You all work. So let's just say you got three kids. So let's say mom and dad make 50000 a piece. You know, that's 100000 total. And then the kids work. You got three kids. And then they work. 
that let's say they just only make twenty five hundred dollars a piece. I made twenty five thousand dollars a year a piece. That's extra seventy five thousand dollars. So once you pull together and then now you have this house, so that's one hundred seventy five thousand dollars buying a house, and then maybe get them all cars so they can get their bus to work to come back home, and then keep compounding that money together. And of course, as they get older, the more income they make, and then they buy another one, buy another one, buy another one. So it's not, but the, the key of it is, is and this Alex, you probably heard this. I'm the parent. You're going to do what I say or get out the house. Why not bring them to the table so they can, you, you let them make their lumps and make their, their, uh, all their trials and tribulations in the house while they have a safety net. So you start teaching them how to budget money. You start teaching them how to uh, understand what interest rates is. You teach them how to, okay, you got to pay your bills on time. But you teach them when they have a safety net. So you bring them all to the table. Let's just say you didn't do it when they was growing up, but when they're 18 and start teaching them this. So when they go out on their own and they already set up for success because y'all can pile your money to add houses for each kid. Then their hurdle entry is lower. Their ability to see this higher. And then they just keep working as a family unit. Once the kids get married, they still come as a consortium and start building. Because it's a lot easier to build with, let's say, $175,000 than with $25,000. But what we do as Americans, don't matter what race, religion, creed you is, we send our kids out there, they got the education of nothing, and they start off with $25,000 a year. And they struggle. Yep. And then they keep struggling. They keep struggling. They keep struggling. And then the parents are like, well, I did all I could do. No, you didn't do all you could do. You did the bare minimum. You did the bare minimum <laughs> just to get your kid out the house so you could be an individual and go do what you want to do. But how much further can you be alone if y'all stay together? So, Alex, I'm just using you and your mom as an example. Your mom, good paying job. She got her side hustle. Salute to her. But if if you wasn't like, oh damn, this mom's still trying to treat me like I'm six years old, and I don't know if that's if that's how it was, the reason why you left the house or whatever. But and then you got your job where you're at, you're making good pay, and then now y'all collaborating money, and then now y'all building, 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 building. How much further, how much faster? And then you get you find a wife, get married. You know, your mom got a house, you got a house, now your mom, and y'all still working as a trio. How much far, How much further, how much faster? If everybody's on the same page. Because that's how the real world is. It's a collaboration effort to do everything. You can grow faster. And immigrants are collaborating to get stuff done. And America's still trying to be individuals. That's why most of them don't have nothing. Because they can't do nothing on an individual seller. I know I look, went a little long-winded, but had to get my whole concept out there. No, I agree with you. Absolutely. Um, and I see it all the time, especially mostly, I mean, just with my wife's family, just because I see, you know, friends of their family that come here and I've told you about one of them, you know, they own a construction company and it's every single family member just about that gets here is working in that company. I mean, the whole company just about is ran by just family, but it's mm -hmm. equal effort. It's not like, Oh yeah, my son runs this part of the company and the son just is an entitled brat and thinks that, oh, it's my dad's company. I'm going to get my way. Like, no, the son works, you know, and then the, the nieces and nephews, they work. The brothers, the sisters, they work. So it's an equal effort. I mean, they're having, you know, meetings, they're working on the weekends, they're traveling for the company. They're actually putting in work. It's not like they just feel entitled and, oh, this is just going to get handed down to me. So in that process, you know, it went from, you know, just to give some details on how that can grow on a on a team effort is, you know, went from a construction company to now when they travel, that company has been buying real estate. So instead of staying in a hotel, the employees, they stay in real estate owned by a different company that is owned by the same owner and the company pays the real estate company. And so, you know, now they're buying properties all in, you know, Florida, different states, New Jersey and stuff like that. And so, like, you know, they're able to expand on both ends now. And the more family that comes over here, the more positions that get created, the more contracts they get with different, you know, builders and stuff. And 
it keeps growing that way. And I've seen it with other families too, with other immigrant families. Um, and this is one thing that I always argue and I might get hate from some people that see this, but this is my point with like Puerto Ricans, you know, you, we've mentioned, you know, say my family, they're Puerto Rican, they're from Puerto Rico, but the Puerto Ricans that grew up and were born here, totally Americanized. They don't have that family concept as it should be. They might all get together and have family meetings and, or not meetings, but family gatherings and food and whatever, but they're at each other's throats, just like any other American family. And if they could learn how to create unity within a family like some of the other Latin American countries, I think they would see a big difference. But it's uh, everything that you said, though, is it's 100% true. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like we talked about it. My wife came from third world country, Albania, and the family came here and it wasn't, hey, you turn 18, kick the, fam kick the people out the house. Mom worked, brother worked, kids worked, and they could pile their money. They wasn't sitting there trying to live high on the hall. They kept modest means, but bring in money. Modest means, bring in money. And then they made decisions as a family. America's great for, oh, I'm the dad. I know everything. Y'all got to listen to me. I see why kids want to leave because parents don't, don't adjust. And the parents are just doing what they learned from beforehand. Oh, be an individual. You got to get out there on your own. Birdie, you got to fly. No, they compiled their money. They all worked. They all compiled their money. And then they made decisions as a family. I mean, of course, some people might have pulled more pulled than the next, but they made decisions as a family. So then the pot grows and then they didn't raise the level of, level of living. It's just a pot grows. Then the next transition is, Oh, now we can go buy a house. You know, they went from renting to, hey, we got a house big enough for everybody to live in. Then they kept working the kapow to, now we can go do this. Now we can go do this. And everybody's just working to make stuff happen. Eventually, the kids are going to move out. Eventually, they are. But why are you in a rush for them to go out there and kill themselves and try to make it on their own? Most Americans, they can't make it on their own with just the mom and dad there together. So now you're going to send your kid out on own with one income that's making less than mom and dad is and thinking, oh, they're going to be all right. I did it. They can do it too. Why not keep it all in the house? Teach them all the, the roadblocks and everything that you went to in the house while they have that safety net. They can make the mistakes fall, but okay, well, we ain't got to worry about being on the street. Hey, hey boy, you just go to your room. We, we, we're going to figure this out. And then next thing you know, the family splintered. You know, now, oh yeah, my son, he just all call, always calling to ask for money. I would too. You didn't teach him nothing about how the economics work, how anything work. You got, to, you told him, oh, you got to do it by yourself. Ain't nobody going to help you. But the thing is, the true help that he could have had is right there in the house. I, I remember watching, and this probably going to get the video banned, so I ain't going to say his name, but it <laughs> is with Tate. Yeah. Uh, and then they was talking about how they was wondering, everybody want to know how the brotherhood of those two are so closely entwined. It wasn't something that they learned. I mean, yeah, their father told them, but if you look at the video, they said they talked to immigrants, Muslim immigrants, and then his guys is working in a bakery, but he's driving a Lamborghini. And then the guy, the so he asked him one day, one of the, one of the brothers asked him, like, how are you able to drive this Lamborghini when you work here at the bakery? And he said, y'all Westerners, y'all think y'all have to do it alone. But what we did was we got a big house. Everybody worked and compiled their money. So I got six brothers. We all work. They get married. They have wives. They all work. So now we have cars. We have houses. We have everything because everybody is in a unified effort. We go buy businesses and we keep growing because everybody's in a unified effort for one objective. So all of us can succeed. And then that's how the those brothers that I'm talking about, so we don't get banned, they start with a T. <laughs> but that's why those brothers are so tight because they realize the way to succeed is with a team effort. Not hey, you hey, you go out there and do YouTube and I'm gonna go out there and, and uh go party it up. That's why when one of the brothers say they got 26 cars, the other brothers say they got 26 cars. 
because they did it together. You know, in America, we like, oh, well, that ain't your car. You and your brother share that car. So? I'm still going to get the same girls in the same car. Ain't nobody worried about that but America. Not, nobody but the West. But that's why immigrants come to America and run laps around us because we still trying to be individuals and, and struggling when everybody else is being a team and seceding. But like you said, America taught us to blame everybody else for our problems instead of blaming ourselves. I agree 100%. That being said, guys, though, if you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Don't forget to like the video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.